Don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So I need to make some more thank you cards for February. The ones that I made in December carried me through to January and now I'm nearly out. So I need to just do a quick stock up and create some cards to send out as thank yous as and when I need. Um, so as normal, um, I am going to do them in European A6 size or metric A6 size. Um, if you're wondering, if you're in the States, what the difference is between that and your standard A2, that's the difference. So not a lot really. So this is what you get when you cut your uh, eight and a half by 11 letter size down to create a card. That's a top fold version. Um, and this is what we get with A4. So there's not a lot of difference in the sizing. So if you want to recreate this, if you're over in the States, then you're gonna get something similar, but not quite the same size. You just have to tailor your inner piece, which I'm going to show you in a moment, to fit. So, and I'll come back to that in a second. So I've already created six um, side fold A6 card planks. I've got my A6 envelopes that I'm going to go with them. So these are just a nice little off-white, a kind of ivory, maybe creamy kind of colour. So now I've got those done and dusted. I can put those to one side because I won't be needing those until a bit later on. So to create my topper, or to create the main focal for my thank you card, um, I've got three pieces of watercolour cardstock, um, or mixed media cardstock, I think it is in this case. Let me just grab my pad and I'll show you what I'm using. So I'm using the Dale Rowney Mixed Media Multi-Technique Paper. So and according to the front of that, it is, well it's A4 size, which is 297 millimeters by 210, but in inches it's 11.7 and 8.3 inches, so almost eight and a half by 11. Almost, but not quite. And 169 pound, it says. I know it varies depending on what type of paper you're actually using. So what's called cardstock and an ordinary paper all carry different weights, which makes it really confusing. But um, as long as you've got or working with uh, a decent kind of weight for your project, it's just one of those trial and error kind of things. So for this one, this is going to be enough to create six because these will get cut in half to fit. But I'm just creating one big kind of like motherboard, if you like. And all I've done is I've just joined them on the back with a little bit of stencil tape just to stop them from moving so I can work on this as one piece rather than more than one. Let me just zoom out a little bit further just so you can see the edges. There you go. That makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? So for this, I'm going to be using my Brusho pigment powders. So these are from Colorcraft, it's crystal colors. So it's, they're just pigments, dry pigments that come out in a powder. And then once you activate with water, they kind of all wick and flow together. Now, I've used these quite a few times in the past, um, but I haven't used them for a few months. So I thought I would give them a go today, but I'm going to be using um, some greeny colours. So all the ones that I've got are marked off on this like checklist. So I want some um, some yellows and some greens. I've got a lime green, I've got olive green which is going to be a little bit darker. I'm looking for lemon which I've got there and there's a, a golden yellow. Is that, have I got two greens? That's a leaf green. I've got yellow yellow. That would be sunburst yellow. Uh, scarlet there, purple. Let's have a look, that's black, don't want that one. Yellow ochre. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'll have that out just in case. Sea green, don't want any that in, don't want any red, don't want any turquoise, don't want any ultramarine, don't want any orange, don't want any more green, don't want terracotta. So that's dark brown. So the only other one that I haven't got out is the leaf green. So those should do. Now some of these colours, some of the green colours do have yellow pigments in them, um, which kind of helps a little bit. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to give um, these pieces of cardstock a light dusting of water. And I'm going to go all the way over. Now they will start lifting, but that's fine. So I'm just going to 
let that soak in for a little while just so that it's got a little bit of moisture on the surface. Now obviously when I start adding the pigments they're all going to start running off which is not what we want. Which is why I'm just wetting just to start off with just to let it stretch a wee bit before we start adding the pigments. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute or two while that water just soaks in on the surface and then I'll be right back. Okay so that water's had a little bit of time just to sit on that surface. So I'm going to start adding some of the pigment powders now. So the first one I'm going to use is just the yellow. So I'm just going to shake that over the top. And you can see where it's still a little bit wet it has actually started to activate. And I want more of a kind of yellowy base on this than I do green. So I'm add a little bit of that and then I'm going to take um, my lime green and then just shake that over as well. And it doesn't look like there's much green coming out of there but we'll see. <laughs> you can see it start to activate so there are some green pigments in there. Okay, and then we'll just add another leaf green on top of that. Just give them a shake up. And then just like pepper and salt, just go all the way over. Now this is not an exact science. You never know what you're going to get until you then start activating with more water. As they all start to run together, you can pretty much see where you need to go if you want to add more colour. And you will get it pooling a little bit, kind of like in the middle. Alright, so I need to add some more yellow over this side. So let's grab that. Just dust over lightly and you can go as heavy or as light as you want with this. See now we've got lots of green pooling over that side which isn't exactly what I want so I'm just going to get some kitchen roll I'm just going to absorb some of that up. There's a real load of it just on the edges, so just soak some of that in. This is kind of nice though. And that kitchen roll will just wick up some of that water. And then we can just add a little bit more kind of like yellow over this side just to even it off and then maybe a little bit more at this side. kind of like that swirliness over there. Let's just try and take up some of that green from there. And a little bit of that green from over there. And then it will just settle itself back down again. I 
think I'm going to add a little bit more yellow over this side. greening than I thought so where's just that yellow yellow that'll do and then again I'm going to leave those now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my heat gun and I'm just going to gently heat over the top, let them dry and then they will dry back or die back. The colours won't be quite so vibrant once they're actually dry. You'll see if you haven't seen these in action before. Okay so there they are they're now all dry so what I want to do now is just to lift a little bit of that colour off just to get a little bit of kind of like mottling in that background now just like distress inks they are water reactive once they're dry so if you get any more water on top of them it will or it can lift that colour back off again so what I'm going to do is using my distress spray bottle try saying that after a few drinks distress sprayer bottle is I'm just going to put, let's see if I can get it to work. That's it. So just lightly put some more droplets just over the top, just randomly all over, but not a, th a thin mist this time, like larger droplets. and you'll see that it starts to react again. So I'm going to give it a second or two, well, say about a minute or so, to re-react. And then I'm going to lay some kitchen paper, or some kitchen towels over the top and then see if we can just lighten up and lift up some more of that colour from that paper. And you can see where the water's coming through. There you go. Can you see where I've actually lifted it? And you can do this as many times as you want to. You can keep on going, adding more droplets of water onto it and lifting off as many times until you get the effect that you're happy with. So I'm going to add just a few more again. I want a lighter tone and variation on these. Don't want them to be too dark. So again, leave them for a minute or two, or about 30 seconds or so, and then you can come back in again with your kitchen towel and do it as many times as you want. I'm going to do this two or three more times so I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you the finished result when I'm happy with the amount of mottling that I've got on those pieces of card. Okay so I've done the water mottling about another 
two times I think I did it and I'm fairly happy with the way that they're kind of looking now so I'm not going to do any more so what I do need to do though is trim them down now to the right size that I want to use them for working on so I've got three pieces I want six in total so they have creased a little bit but that's fine that will work itself out and I'm going to cut them to the size that I actually want them so that's going to be just for me just over 10 centimeters it's actually 101 millimeters so they're cut to the right size now if you're working with a2 size you'll probably want to do them um, I've got that down 136 millimeters or 104 which is just slightly shy of five and a half and five of four and a quarter if you're doing it at a2 if you're doing it at a6 like I am then make your topper 101 by 144 that way you'll have that little white border all the way around there you go so again cut that to the right size just shuffle that up so now I've got the right amount so this is my old stamping up paper trimmer which I now believe they've retired so once the blades go in this that's it I'll have to find a replacement I shall probably end up going with a, with a tonic one or something like that if I can't get any more blades okay so I've now got my six equal sized pieces of mottled watercolour effect cardstock so each one totally unique all completely different they look the same but they are completely and utterly different never to be repeat, repeated pattern um, you know they're just so um, different but similar but you never know what you're gonna get with these and that's what I like about it okay so I'm going to do one of the next step and then I'll repeat that for the other five cards so just so you know what I'm going to be using okay so next I'm going to bring in um, my Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Glorious Garden Stamp now this is the big one that comes with its own stamp block but I'm not going to be using that I'm actually going to use the stamp press and I've already mounted it across the front of my stamp press let's just do it to one side and then I'm going to place my watercolour cardstock and I'm going to just line it up about there and I'm just going to drop one of those just into the corners and then I'm going to bring in some Versamark um, embossing ink and I'm going to go all over again excuse the noise of my wobbly bookcase in the background really ink it up so I'm only going to show you doing it once because you won't want to see this this doing it done six times trust me it's going to get really really repetitive okay that should be enough and then I'm going to stamp down Give it a good push, make sure I get a good even coating. And I can't really see where I've gone if I've actually gone with that. Of course, if you don't want to emboss, you can just use black stays on ink or something like that. I'm trying to get a kind of glossy effect on this which is why I want to try and do this I'm hoping to do this with embossing powder with a real good push down I'm 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's take that off. Put that to one side. Get some scrap paper. Drop that on. Get my black embossing powder. And I'm going to shake that all over. Paying particular attention to the middle, but not necessarily to the edges. And then let's knock that off. Okay. Put that back very, very carefully. And now I'll go and grab my heat gun. On five, four. Okay, so here we go. I've kind of sort of warmed it up a little bit, but we'll see how long it takes without me burning my fingers. There we go, it's just starting to go. Because this is a heat tool, not an embossing tool, it's not quite as hot one of the embossers but it still works it just takes a little bit longer okay I think there we go now I don't think I mentioned but it's the Ranger embossing powder in black it says super fine detail but I don't think actually that it is super fine but you get the impression, you get the right kind of look that I was going for. Right, so, now that's cooled down enough for me to be able to touch it. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other five. I might actually just do four and then do one with black stays on ink so you can see the difference in using embossing powder and an ink and then we'll compare it at the end. Right, so you've seen me do that one, I'll go off and do the others, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've now done all six, but I started off with the embossing powder. As you can see, they're all shiny, but a lot of the detail has actually filled in. So Rangers claims that this is a, a super fine detail embossing powder. Yeah, no. It's not, um, I'm sorry, but I beg to differ. Um, it's filled in a lot of the detail. It's not ultra fine at all. So I got to two and I thought, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop. Because although, yeah, they look good, the contrast between the black and the colors underneath still work. You can still see that the flowers, so they're still okay, but not what I was going for. So I then went in search of my stays on ink and I couldn't find it couldn't find it at all so it's normally in a particular place I've got two of them two pads neither of them are there can't find them anywhere so instead I did the first one this one here I did with black soot archival ink and I think if you compare that to that there's a lot more detail in the stamp so that one was done with jet black, uh, sorry, with the black soot archival ink. And then I thought, do you know, I'm gonna see what it's like trying with a water-based one. So I then went to get my Memento from Sukuniko. Um, and this is a water-based one, but still fade resistant. And I did the remaining three in using that tuxedo black. And I have to say, I think I prefer the ones done in tuxedo black. They're much nicer. You don't get the shine, but to be honest, 
yeah, I'm not all that fussed. I'm glad I've got the detail. I mean, you can see the detail in up here a lot better than you can do on the one. Yeah, it's just a mess. So there's a lot more detail with that tuxedo black. So sometimes, you know, the simplest way is the best. Anyway, so let's just pop all those to one side, bring in one of my card blanks. So this is now going to get stuck down onto the front of that card there as my frontage. Now I can use glue or I can use double sided tape. Um, I think I'm going to use double sided tape because glue will possibly warp. So where's my double sided? Ooh, strong stuff. Finger lift, that's what I'm, what's what I'm looking for, some finger lift tape. Well, well, I'll be back in a second, don't worry, just talk amongst yourselves. There we go. That's the stuff, and I'll need some scissors as well, won't I? Oh dear. I can't believe that. I've just seen another roll just within... Oh, anyway. <laughs> it's always the case, you go looking for something. You can't find it. And it's right there in front of your face. Okay, so this double sided tape, it's what they call finger lift, which basically means that the glue underneath doesn't go right to the edge. So you can get your finger, he says. There we go. It's easier to pull the back off the tape. Yeah. Let's open that card blank up. And then I can position that just first of all in the corner. See if I can even it out. That looks about right to me. And I can just push that down. First card. So I'm going to do that with the other five. I'm going to use the, the ones with the black embossing powder just because, you know, they're still okay to use and that's enough. So that's going to be the first one. So I shall do the remaining five and then I'll be right back. Okay, so all of my card fronts are now all mounted onto their card bases and using one of the sentiments that comes with the glorious garden stamp set, which is the one that says happy thoughts, I'm just going to stamp directly into the card. So I've done that one and because it's just the one single little stamp you don't really have to bother that much about your stamp press so all you have to do is just make sure that you get it lined up down once and then off perfect so I shall just go ahead and do all the others and then when I've done those I'll be right back Okay, so that's it. That's all six of my cards all done. So they're all stamped, all stuck down, all have their little sentiments inside and all teamed up with their envelopes ready to be sent out whenever I need a thank you. So I can just put those to one side like that. All done and dusted. So that was the stamp set that I used with that. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create those little thank you notes. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.